Oops, it's loose. Nah, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. Brakes on. Welcome to Yatbo's garage. Despite the fact that I promised you this is that the last part is gonna be the last part of uh, my British English or American English uh, um, assembly of this M1 COC electric chopper. This is gonna be the last one, definitely. And uh, I have to say sorry for the bad sound quality on the last video because my, I don't know, I ran into problems with the wireless mic, but it seems to work fine right now. And that's why I have on this camera, another mic. So, the other day when I finished the video, I couldn't resist starting to bleed the brakes. Okay, but I still have some, yeah, I think the front brake needed to be, needs to be uh, bleeded again because it's not applying the same pressure as the rear brake. So what do you need? You need a Phillips screwdriver, an 8 millimeter wrench, and some dot .3 or dot .4 brake fluid. And people keep asking me on my channel, on, on all the social media, what kind of brake fluid do I have to use? it's written on the cover of the uh, brake fluid container. So if you can read, you have an unfair advantage. Okay, so since I have a little, little resistance on the, on, the, on the front brake, I'm gonna show you um, on the front brakes how it works. So uh, another thing you need, you need patience, little hobbit, be patient. Especially on the rear brake, which is a one piston brake, it takes time, it takes time. On the front brake, it's fairly easy, but you have a double piston brake there and a single piston here. And uh, I don't know if you know, 75% of the brake power is on the front wheel. On a four wheel um, 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 vehicle, it's no problem. On a two uh, wheel, like, yeah, you know what I mean. Use the front brake like with care. Because if you apply it too hard, you go, you're gonna slip, definitely. You're definitely gonna slip. So my approach is, if I have to brake, I first engage the rear brake, which is on my, in my case, the, the right side. Um, and then apply the front brake. Because with the rear brake, I don't slip, I don't tilt. So, that's uh, just like one thing. So, um, another thing, secure the fork with, my str with the strap as I did it here, because you have to open up the container and if the fork tilts and it's gonna spill the brake fruit all over the place. And if it hits the paint, it's gonna freaking mess it up. Okay, let's continue with the front brake. <coughs> Since it's a two piston thing, uh, you need a hose and a big container to catch the um, fluid which comes out. Okay, the way I'm doing it is one way. There's another way. I'm pulling the brake fluid in here and drain it through the um, nut valve, however you want to call it. You could also do it like with a, with a here doctor's, how, how you call it, jet or something. You can push the brake fluid in here and push the air upstream. It's fairly fast, but the thing is, if it spills over here, again, you might have a mess. Okay, so let's open up the container in case we need to fill up some brake fluid. Oop, you see, made a mistake already. Because this is the rear brake. I don't want to drain the rear brake. I want to drain the front brake. Take the cover off. I mean, for some of you guys, it might be like, oh, why is he explaining that? But you know what, there are some 
people who are going to ask questions. And I want to explain it like fairly easy. Um, actually, if the second person helping you, that wouldn't hurt. So you open the valve, press the lever, and close the valve. Then release the lever, press again, and open the valve again. OK? Check the level on the container. If it drops too low and it's going to suck air, you have to start all over again. So I'm going to put some, no, there's still enough there. I'm going to go to the lower piston now, do the same thing. Press, open up the screw, close it, release the lever, press again. Okay, so it's going to push out the air. Problem is, with this method, air always travels up, so it takes longer. So I'm going to fill up the container a little bit. There you go, spill it on the paint. And you see, you don't want that to happen. And lucky me, the paint is strong enough to resist it. Like on the paint job I did before, it messed up the whole paint. Here yeah, I got lucky. So, you know what? I'm telling you, don't make the same mistakes that I do. That's the purpose of that video. So one more time, press it, open the valve, close it, release the level. Press it again. Yeah, pretty good. That's the whole thing. And again, especially on the rear brakes, if your brake lines are empty, you need patience. Just do it all over again. It will work. Make sure that the valves are closed. That's it. I mean, it's not rocket science. It works. OK, so I'm going to take, oh, do not forget to close the cover again, the tank. So now we'll do some. Uh, a summary of all the modifications I made and I will put some links into the description for all the parts I bought on eBay and I think eBay UK is more or less the same as eBay in the EU oh man I just got lucky here with the with the brake fluid Man. Okay. So, what did I do to modify this thing? Ah. There's still some brake fluid here on the cover. As I said, you don't have to mis have to do the mistakes I did. So, ah, another thing I added are those ammunition boxes. I had these uh, leather bags 
on it, but they were kind of slipping all the time, and I don't like it. So what I did is, I have to attach the second microphone, just in case. I took off the covers of the uh, rear wheel mount and used those. Oh wait, let me get the let me get the battery light. To shine some light. Okay, so I used the two uh, uh, threads of the cover to fix uh, the um, ammunition box and drilled a hole in the frame for a third screw. Okay, and then I had like a problem. There was no way to actually close and lock it. I just drilled a hole, put a ring screw into that. Now I can put a lock on it, a padlock, and it's fine. So if you, if you have the old version of uh, this M1 shopper and you don't like the light bulb uh, indicators, change them for LEDs. The, LED, the, the um, indicator relay is not depending on any load. It works fine. Then I actually built, uh, let's see if I can find a better place for the light. I built this rack. The first version was out of 10 millimeter copper pipes, which was, uh, it was okay. Like if you're into like brazing or soldering, it's fairly easy. I connected it there with a wing nut so I can take it off. And here at the seat post uh, uh, suspension connection to fix it. So if I want to take it off, it's like just losing four wing nuts and I'm done with it. Oh, there's still some, still some brake fluid. Oh man, I messed it up completely. Another thing that really makes sense is securing the battery with this bar from coming up and this bar from pushing forward. Works fine too. Okay. Another thing that I recommend if you don't like it, and I had like, I spent like on the last video, I spent like an hour on it just to keep those down. So there's one guy, I just discovered that on Facebook, he's just gonna drill holes for these threads here. Put some, no, put some screws here to keep the thing down. Works fine too. If you're okay with it, do it. Um, what else? What else? What else did I do? Drag bar. If you want to put on a drag bar, which is fairly nice, and actually the drag bar, is, it's much easier to secure that with the original um, mount than the original one. Um, you have to deal with the fact that the brake lines are going to get too long. The rear one is not a problem. You can like somehow hide it within the battery compartment. Works fine. No problem. The front one, I mean, you have to play around or just order a, a short one. Another thing, if the um, spot doesn't shine far enough, just elevate the mount of the um, spot a little bit with screws and you're fine. Then you can tilt it back a little bit more because on the original mount, it keeps catching here on the mount of the gauges. Okay. Um, anything else? What, did I, what else did I do to that? Oh, yeah, here. Foot rest extension. If you are, I'm like one, 183, I would say. Yeah, 1 meter 83. I uh, decided to buy those foot rest extensions. I don't think they're really necessary. 
I just had them, so I tried them, and you see, I put them actually quite back. And I put a long thread there just to stabilize it a little bit. And I'm thinking about like getting like permanent foot, foot rest, like those little bars you can put in, because those foot rests are like nah, they are quite wobbly. Um, another thing, seal, 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 as much as possible, as explained in the former videos, it's, it's going to make your life much easier. Um, oh, yeah, another thing, which just came up on Facebook. Wait, I have to take the belt off now, because otherwise I won't be able to explain that. So I just learned um, on Facebook, uh, some people ask me, you know what, if I fully extend the steering, it keeps hitting the tank. And after a while, I mean, it will at least damage the paint or even destroy the plastic. What I did, I just drilled a hole in the limiter for the steering, put a screw in, you know what, and that limits the steering. It won't affect your driving or your riding because this is only important for parking, you know, it doesn't really matter because if you do a full steer, your footrest will hit the ground. So no problem at all. Another thing which I had in the, in the, in the past is like a bad rear tire. It was like wobbling, 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 wobbling. When I bought this three years ago, spare parts were, were really hard to come by. Uh, nowadays, you find it. Like here in Germany, there's this shop called ATH. I will put a link in the description. Uh, they have all the spare parts, everything. Even if it's not on the homepage, send them a mail, you will get your stuff. They have like almost everything to build a new thing. Um, yeah, another thing is like this. Um, <clears throat> if um, some people told me that their acceleration doesn't work, the problem is the two buttons here, the buttons, for the, for, to, to illuminate the rear brake and uh, activate the recuperation. And I had one problem on one uh, um, brake that the piston didn't push the leverage, the level, far back enough to actually engage into the bottom. Bottom? Bottom. Bottom, bottom, bottom. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's highly unlikely you're going to have a problem with... Uh, the acceleration itself. It's never going to be a problem. On the other hand, there's nothing left to say. I'm actually done. Yeah, the electrics. I told you about the electrics. Make sure that all the plugs and all the sockets are secure, that no water gets in. And um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Yep, here. The indicator switch. On the original one, the, um, the neutral position, it's fairly easy to, if you're like, let's say you, you, you're um, making a left turn, putting the indicator to the left turn, and you go back to neutral, it's fairly easy to slip over to the left indicator. So I changed it, but you have to add another button because the um, ignition switch like on a motorcycle, doesn't turn on the running light. So just turns on the stationary light, and with this one, you can activate the running, running light, and then you can go back into that mode with this switch here on top to uh, activate the far distance light. Yo, that's it so far. So the next one is going to be a test ride, which I, to be honest, already did. But uh, it's going to be a ride through Abidjan. And uh, there's actually nothing more to say. Thanks for the, to the wolf to uh, watching my videos, despite the fact that it didn't understand shit, so to say. But now I fulfilled my promise to have uh, now four series about the M1 shopper um, in English. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. 
I don't know what what's what's what what what's your reason to buy or what what made, what made you decide buying one of those shoppers for me it was like it's battery driven no combustion no diesel no fuel nothing so think about how you're going to charge it i'm going to put a video on later like how to charge it with the sun it's possible all you need is like a charge controller and some solar panels and then you can charge it for free you know it's like Let's take care about the environment a little bit. Okay, that's it. I'm Yapo. I'm out. Hope to see you soon. Hope you follow my channel. Subscribe. And uh, I will put links for everything on here I bought. And I might gonna work on the subtitles to get you a proper British translation, but that's a P and the A to do that. Because... Uh, YouTube doesn't pick my German easily. I mean, it's like, even for me, when I read what YouTube picks up, so it might take a while, but I will work on that. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.